Hey guys, it's been a while since my last video and today I want to share with you a news coming from the React world. It seems like React is introducing a zero bundle size React server component. Now what does that mean? We all been using server side rendering for a long time now. Now the blog post posted on December 21st by Dan Abramov and the team is saying that they are coming up with new ways of doing server-side rendering except that you won't be sharing some of the libraries that you're using to render the components with the client side. So the goal of this new concept, well not new at all, we're basically going back to server-side uh, frameworks like PHP or Java. Uh, you are going to render all your stuff on there. You're doing all the data fetching directly on the server and then rendering the stuff out to the client, pass it down to the client. Now, apparently this concept is what they're proposing and it's not new. Uh, it's not going to be in the next version of React so soon. It's simply a proposal of what they're thinking. And it's likely that this will be incorporated inside React uh, in the near future. So uh, here's a link and I put it, I'll put it in the description below. You can go there and watch this video and where they talk about how to do the data fetching with React server components. And you can also read about the RFC and clone the repo if you want to check it out and then play it, uh, do it on the local. And just to see what they're talking about. They're trying to get an idea of what the community is think uh, will feel like, like what the feedback from the community before they actually implement this to the core of React. So what is this exactly? So uh, the summary is that it's only it's a com components that are you can write in React that only run on the server, right? And it will not be compiled as part of the bundle for the front end. So this is different than you know server side components server-side rendering. This is server-side components. Things that they'll, the clients will never see. The logic that will clients will never run because they will be prematurely ran on the server-side. And the result of that will be passed to the front-end in a format. It's not JSON, but it's something similar where the front-end React will take this, the server will render the output HTML to the client. So they have like an example here. If you look at it, it seems like you can incorporate like this. No, this is all server side. Now, one thing to know is that all server side components must end with dot server dot js to indicate that this is a server side components. And if you want to do client, you need to do dot client dot js. Now, this is something that might turn some people off because yeah, now you have to rename your file. It seems to be a bit more opinionated. And you know you don't want to rename all your stuff on your current source code. So there might be some sort of Webpack helper or some sort of you know tool that will help you translate your file name on the fly. But that's the convention right now, and that seems to be what React is looking at on the server side to determine if a, if a file should be rendered on the server only. So here's an example of server node.server.js. So you're importing the database from the server. And then you have a client side node editor. This is the interesting part. So this component here, it's a pure server side component. It renders on the server. And if you look at it, it looks exactly like React. The only thing missing is that all the lifecycle hooks that are for the client side it miss, is missing. So you can't really use hooks. You can't really use lifecycle hooks on here. So these components are, should be very functional, should be very simple components. So here you got a couple of props. And as you can tell, here, this is the fun part, right? So instead of what you usually do is when you have a client side component and then you have a server side code, you will write some sort of API, a REST API or GraphQL endpoint, and you expose that to the public. And then your, server, your client side component can make an AJAX call to the endpoint to get the data. Now the good thing about this is on the server side, you're getting the data directly. You're here, you're getting the temp, you're getting a, a post with the ID called ID, and then you assign it to the variable notes. And then you just render this whole thing directly. So this is, in a way, this is saving you a lot of headaches for writing like a, another API for the clients. You're just rendering this directly. And here you're rendering the client side 
notes, note editor component directly too. So this is the interesting part to me, which I still need to get my head around. I'm not sure how they were able to do this, but in the end, the the um, the output will be some sort of format, like um, some sort of data when the what the server can render out to the client. So by the time the client see this, they'll see the computed results of all of these components. So think of them like PHP, you have like you know a couple of variables, you're littering var variables everywhere. And then by the time you render it to the browser, you see the rendered output, right? So that seems to be like what this is saying here. And here they go on and explain the motivation. And the main motivation is to have zero bundle size components in which you don't want to use some of the things that are only useful on the on the server side and you don't want to like reuse it on the client side because it's not really relevant to the client so in the end you might like have a huge bundle with a lot of stuff that you don't need so their goal is to reduce the front end bundle size in return that will make your website or apps much much faster so here's where they go they do automatic code splitting um like it, they talk about the loading time, you know, no waterfall loading, everything's asynchronous. You have the abstraction. So here's a lot of design details uh, I'm not gonna go into. This is for the library makers and go into really big details into how this stuff was done. And they have a nice FAQ version, uh, you know, section. So here's a good question. Like, does this replace SSR, server-side rendering? They say no, they're complementary. SSR is primarily a technique to quick display non-interactive version of client components. You still need to pay the cost of downloading, parsing, and executing those client components after the HTML is loaded, which is correct. That's the downside of SSR. Now with server-side components, where the server-side is rendered first and the client component rendered into HTML for fast non-interactive display while they're hydrated. So when combine this in a fast startup, you, you dramatically reduce, reduce the amount of JavaScript that needs to be downloaded to the client. So this is a big explanation of what this is. It's not server-side rendering, and it's not a replacement. The key thing is they can play together at the same time. So there's just a bunch of uh, FAQ things you, need, you can read about. Um, they are working with the author of Next.js in order to bring this to the world. And Hopefully, you know, Next.js will get like first class support for this. I know Next.js is super popular and, you know, hopefully this is going to be something interesting. And like what the main question is like, should you think about moving your stuff to this server component? Well, the thing is, we don't know yet. And it's still really, really early. As you can see, it, the first draft day is December 21st. And today's December 25th, Christmas Day. So it will take at least half a year for this to really get on like a release candidate stage, I'm thinking. So it doesn't mean that you have to quickly move on to this technology, right? So like I still have, a, have not used hooks all over my code. So it really depends on the community and the use case. And if there is a significant benefits from this technique, sure, then I think a lot of people will adopt this. But at the moment, we need to wait and see and we need to Take a look at this and then try to keep up with the discussion around this. That will be my recommendation. Uh, they have a really nice RFC thread in the React RFC's repo. And here you can participate. You can ask questions about this. There's a lot of super interesting discussion in this thread. So definitely should take a look. And I'll put the link in the description below. So yeah, th that will be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy this uh, explanation. I plan to do more of these ep explanation videos and more tutorials obviously coming up. Sorry I've been away for so long, but uh, I'm back and I'll be making more videos. Please like and subscribe my video and I hope to see you guys next time.